So for me, this feels in a way like home and it's just, it's just my happy place. So I've been plugging away with the Occupied Oracle project. Whenever I go to sit down to work, I sort of have to review the different cards and all of their different states. I have some houses that are just sketched. I have some where the transfers are ready. I have some where there's just very basic backgrounds that I've kind of built and others where I've started to put more sort of paint and texture into them. Once I kind of just review over where the project kind of is and looking at everything all together. I then sort of narrow down what two cards I'm going to be working on. I find that working on two cards or like a pair of cards at a time allows me to kind of jump back and forth between things to keep my eyes fresh and just keep things moving. But it also makes me feel kind of productive at the same time because I'm not just honing in on one card. Even though there's a lot of cards in different states of beginning and middle and nearing the end, I always find myself narrowing down two that I want to focus in on. The next two that I moved forward with was the Nightmare on Elm Street house, as well as the house from Hocus Pocus. That kind of initial layer of texture had been put in on these two cards, whether it was a little bit of paint or oil pastel or just something to get it past just paper glued down basically. The thing with my backgrounds is that I always like to fuse sort of all the pieces together so that even though it's just collage that I've put down on my substrate, I like to then come in and add paint and texture and all those things and sort of unify all of those collage elements together so it feels like a cohesive sort of composition in a sense that really becomes the frame and the landscape for then my illustration to go in on top of. This is always an interesting process because my mixed media philosophy is that of more is more. So it's been a real challenge for me to reel it back and just walk a really fine line of adding in those extra details and paint and introducing new media on top of the collage while also restricting myself a bit knowing that this really has to be a backdrop for the illustrations because the illustration is, I think, the focus of these cards. So as for Hocus Pocus, that was a very easy decision early on that I had to include this film in the deck somehow. I think most people, when they think of Hocus Pocus, they probably think of the witch's cottage, which is not to say that that's not something that I'm also going to include. There may be, you know, a film that's represented twice in there, you know? Some of these landmarks are just so famous that it's, it's hard to pick and choose. Um, but for me, when I think of Hocus Pocus, I actually think of Max Dennison's house. And that's because I just remember watching this movie as a kid and it would come on TV or we would put it on, you know, with our VHS tape at the start of the Halloween season or like in September. And those first like 10 to 15 minutes of the movie is really what just makes you feel like Halloween is coming. It feels like fall. Uh, you have these beautiful like east coast uh, leaves and trees and when I see Max's house I, it just makes me think of that autumnal sort of feeling. For me it's kind of a bit more of a personal decision to start with Max Dennison's house first and using that to really represent Hocus Pocus among the Oracle. When I first started this card the backgrounds that I had created for the house that I had sketched was actually it, 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 it was going in the wrong direction. It had more like purples and cooler tones. I had built this sort of like cloud sky in the top of it. I had sort of included like a little candle. But w once I created my house transfer, basically my taking my drawing from my sketchbook and putting it onto tracing paper to then transfer the illustration, I was able to visualize what the house was gonna look like on that background. And for me, it wasn't 
capturing that feeling that I have when I watch the first part of the movie and you see his house. So I knew I had to change directions on the background completely and I actually had started over with a new card entirely, a new background entirely. When I revamped the Hocus Pocus card, or the background rather, I wanted to capture that fall feeling. And beyond that too, I was thinking of a very specific visual in the film and that's Danny's costume. I remember as a kid wanting to wear what she wore so badly it had all of those just very traditional Halloween colors, the black, the orange, the fringe, the embroidery, her hat, uh, her witch costume is just one of the absolute best. And that's what I decided to use as sort of my basis of inspiration for the new background that I then created. So I was pulling in lots of oranges, um, warmer hues, traditional sort of Halloween vibes, even coming in and adding in uh, little scribbly stars with sort of crayon really calls back to those details found in Danny's costume in her witch's outfit. That was such a cool thing to reference while I was making that because it was such a personal favorite of mine growing up and it really became the perfect thing to use to transform that background and ultimately set the card in the right direction. Meanwhile, the other card that I was working on was the house from Nightmare on Elm Street. And there were a couple of different directions that I could obviously take this in. Kind of two things came to mind, or two things that I experienced rather. The first was just creating the sketch of the house. I debated whether I wanted to do like the perfect clean version of the house that you see in like the first one or even the second one. I made the decision to represent the house in its more dilapidated, rundown, overgrown look with the boarded up windows and whatnot. So I thought that it would just be more dynamic and would look more interesting than that of a pristine, beautiful house. There's plenty of those that are probably going to be seen throughout the deck. So I wanted to take the opportunity to be able to do all those tiny little details of, you know, uh, wood lines in the shutters, more overgrown shrubbery and landscape in the front and all of that. So when I think of Nightmare on Elm Street, I think of just the word flesh. It was one of those movies that I think I saw it probably younger than I should have seen it for the first time. And I just remember the practical effects when you see a movie that young, it really sticks with you for a very long time. Flesh is just the word that comes to my mind. Obviously I'm thinking of Freddy Krueger's face and the various things that happen to the kids and their nightmares. I knew that I had to incorporate that into my background through just sort of like warmer collage papers, adding in uh, these sort of pink blobs and uh, sort of stretchy paint lines in there to kind of hint at that feeling that I have when I think of that film. Something else that's kind of fun in the background as well is that among my ephemera stash, I had found this photo of an old telephone and I wanted to incorporate that in as well. Not only does it hint from the famous scene from the first movie, but it was also a good way for me to then incorporate a little bit of texture with some oil pastel, kind of creating a little bit of a phone cord that goes all the way around the border of the card. I ended up being really happy with the way the Elm Street card turned out, or certainly at least the background, because it was colors and things that I don't normally grab and use in my work, but I do feel like it visually represents a lot of the Nightmare on Elm Street sort of franchise and um, just visuals of the different movies.
One thing I can say though is that obviously I only have two cards completed, four with the addition of these two new ones that I've been working on. So pinning down my process for all of these is still sort of a new thing. It's something that I'm still kind of working on. But one thing I can say is that I do have a favorite step uh, or process or layer while making these cards. And that for me is the inking. I love when I have my transfer ready, which is basically just taking my sketch from my sketchbook, putting it onto tracing paper, and then I use my light box to take what I've drawn on tracing paper and do it live on my substrate, basically using a brush pen. This has always been one of my favorite ways to make art and to draw is just a black pen on basic white paper. It's how I did a lot of my drawings growing up, certainly as a teenager, and I would just try to get it as little and as jam-packed and detailed, whatever it was that I was drawing, uh, as much as humanly possible. For me, when I get my light box out and I have a number of houses ready to be transferred, to be inked with my brush pen, you know, I sort of savor that moment. I turn the lights off so that I'm utterly focused on my light box, uh, you know, I'll light a candle and really just get into the zone. This for me is my absolute happy place. It's sort of like the foundation of all of my art making and skills that I've acquired over the years really started with just a black pen on paper. So for me, this feels in a way like home and it's just, it's just my happy place. As I bring two more cards to completion, The Nightmare on Elm Street House and Hocus Pocus, Max Dennison's house, I'm definitely in the project. <laughs> I'm, I'm in it. Um, it's happening. It feels real at this point. I'm beyond just sample cards. I'm excited to see where this all goes. And at this point, I think the amount of cards that I have in progress is probably tripled. I have a lot of cards and a lot of different states of completion. I think my only concern at this point is not getting overwhelmed. Uh, I'm gonna continue doing what I'm doing, grabbing cards that I feel inspired to work on, whether that's a background, drawing a new house, or inking a new one, and carrying on with the project. We'll see where it goes. <laughs>